models in American history. There are models in the world right today. So in the, probably the most democratic country in the world is the poorest country in South America, uh, which is really an aspiring example of uh, a functioning democracy. <coughs> it will surprise no one who knows U.S. history that Washington's trying to undermine it. And it's, of course, not presented that way. But there are exciting, inspiring examples in our own history and elsewhere. And the Obama army, if it decides to pursue that direction, I could make a big difference. Well, another source of evidence about the Obama, likely Obama programs, the ones we're beginning to see, uh, comes from the uh, uh, financing of the campaign. Now, that's extremely important. It's been shown pretty uh, convincingly that the financing of elections has a, is a very good predictor of policies. The best work on this is by political economist uh, Thomas Ferguson, what he calls the investment theory of politics, which is basic, basically based on the idea that uh, what we call elections are moments when groups of investors coalesce and invest to control the state. Uh, and if you look at the groups of investors, uh, you can make a pretty good prediction of uh, what's going to happen. And it works remarkably well for the last century. Uh, well, how well is it working here? Uh, the funding for Obama was overwhelmingly from financial institutions. Uh, the, and they preferred, they much preferred him to uh, McCain. So Obama got a lot more funding from the financial institutions than McCain did. And if you check closely, the swing states, you know, <coughs> where a lot of energy went. Uh, he was, they were able to outspend McCain substantially, mainly because of these finances. And the, poll, the polls shifted as the advertising shifted. And Obama barely won, thanks to that. Uh, well, we, can, we will soon see uh, how uh, effective the uh, investment theory of politics is in this case. The major problem that uh, the Obama administration has to face, naturally, is the, the destruction of the, uh, uh, the collapse of the economy. Uh, what's on the front pages is the financial uh, institutions which have collapsed. There's also a, a serious collapse in the manufacturing sector, which is being treated quite differently. Uh, in the financial sector, uh, where it could turn out to be uh, as bad as the Great Depression, nobody knows. Uh, there are, there's a lot of commentary. Uh, so Simon Johnson, who's a former chief economist of uh, the International Monetary Fund, has written <coughs> recently that, uh, quoting, elite business interests, uh, financiers, in the case of the United States, played a central role in creating the crisis, making ever larger gambles, and with the implicit backing of the government, continued until the inevitable collapse. <coughs> Uh, and in fact, uh, if you look at Obama's advisors, uh, they're people who were primarily responsible for creating the crisis. Uh, Ruben, Summers, uh, Geithner, and others. Well, going on with Johnson, he says, more alarming, uh, they are now using their influence to prevent precisely the sorts of, sorts of reforms that are needed and fast to pull the economy out of its nosedive. The government seems helpless or unwilling to act against them. Throughout the crisis, the government has taken extreme care not to upset the interests of the financial institutions uh, or to question the basic outlines of the system that got us here. Uh, these are not laws of nature. I mean, these are decisions, largely of courts, sometimes of legislation. Uh, and there are many other options. So if you look at the standard economic literature, you know, nothing out of the, off on the margins, you can read that uh, nowhere is it written in stone that the short-term interests of corporate shareholders in the United States deserve a higher priority than all other corporate stakeholders. Stakeholders means people, working people, working communities. No reason at all why they shouldn't be the ones who corporations are responsible to or should just take them over. And in fact, it's come close to that a couple of times. This time later I'll give some examples. Uh, that suggests some short-term strategies and also some longer-term ones. Uh, I don't have time to, I want to go on to the
other things, so I'll put it off. But to just note that, uh, uh, that uh, Johnson, Simon Johnson, is not the only one who's in the mainstream who's being very harshly critical. So the uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren, who's the uh, Harvard Law professor who was uh, chosen as to chair the government, the congressional committee that's monitoring uh, TARP, the uh, uh, Troubled Assets uh, Relief Program, the giveaway program. Uh, she's very critical of it. Uh, she uh, criticizes what she calls Obama's approach of protecting uh, the institutions and the owners. And she calls for the shareholders to be wiped out. Uh, they made the risky loans, they got the huge profit in a capitalist system, which is their problem. Uh, in our system, which is very remote from a capitalist system, uh, the rich and powerful are supposed to uh, make the pro get the profits, but the public is supposed to pay the costs and take the risks. And that's exactly what's happening now, and that's what's being criticized. Going back to Johnson, uh, he says we should break up the banks. Uh, there should be no more too big to fail insurance policy. The big institutions like Citigroup and Bank of America uh, get a publicly guaranteed insurance policy. It's called too big to fail. It means you can, you're free to do any risky thing you like, make a huge amount of profit, and if anything goes wrong, the public will bail you out. Uh, and that's been going on for decades. Uh, the current collapse of Citigroup is just essentially reenacting something that happened in the early 80s and when they were bailed out by Paul Fulker, the IMF, and were able to reconstitute. And this is an insurance policy. It puts uh, the U big, big U.S. Uh, uh, institutions uh, at an advantage over any competitors because they don't have the insurance policy. So they're free to take risks, make profits, and uh, you know, proceed happily because they'll be bailed out by you. Well, Warren, Johnson, and many others are suggesting that uh, the public should not accept these games, get rid of the executives, and break up the banks. And there are longer term uh, possibilities, like, for example, uh, letting the stakeholders, the workforce, and the community just take them over. Uh, William Black, who was the top regulator during the Reagan Bush, uh, <coughs> first Bush uh, savings and loan crisis, the biggest financial bailout prior to the current one, uh, he goes much farther. He says they should all be uh, charged with uh, crimes, with fraud, end up in jail. Uh, this is right from the center of the mainstream. These are not left-wing critics or anything like that. Well, all of this is off the agenda. The principle is to save the institutions and keep the leadership intact, and the public will pay no matter what it costs. Maybe the mandates will work, maybe they won't. Well, those are the topics being discussed, but there are more fundamental questions, like should we play this game at all? I won't talk about Obama's record on civil liberties, but it's uh, pretty depressing. Uh, including he's, he's accepted some of the most extreme reactionary positions of the Bush administration. For example, just recently uh, denying uh, court over, uh, getting the Justice Department to try to overrule court decisions that have granted uh, the right of habeas corpus to the people subject to rendition. Say the ones who are in the back of our own air base. Nobody knows how many or how many of those secret prisons they are. So the courts have said that the Bush programs can't be accepted, they're unconstitutional, these people have rights. But Obama's moving in to uh, sustain the country was campaign rhetoric. And it's not the only example. Well, let's turn to foreign policy, <coughs> the more complex issues, uh, but not much information. The Obama administration has continued the position during the campaign of pretty much avoiding issues. Uh, as far as there is information, either rhetorical or actions, it's mostly in the Middle East. So let's take Iraq. Obama has indicated, though not very clearly, that he might live up to the uh, status of forces agreement that was forced on Bush by uh, Iraqi oppos uh, opposition.